Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. First thing is most certainly first, if you wouldn't mind giving me a like and a subscribe, I would really appreciate it. And whilst you're there, remember to always let me know how you're doing out of 10, because for me this week, I'm gonna say I'm an eight out of 10. Um, I'm feeling pretty good, the weather's been nice, um, but we've had a few issues and we've been TB testing, which can get anyone down. So um, yeah, onto the highs and the lows of the week. So, pff, highs of the week. Well, I'm going to say that the high of the week is the fact that we got some rain over the weekend, which was dead nice. I was complaining last week. We hadn't had any rain. We could really do with it. It rained it all day on Saturday. And then on Sunday, we had quite a lot of rain, which was, again, pretty good. So that coupled with a bit of warmth, I'm hoping, we'll get the grass growing a little bit because we were down to 18 kilos um, of growth per... Uh, 18 kilograms of dry matter per hectare per day. Yeah take some saying so i'm hoping it will get a bit of a spike from that bit of rain hopefully um should help things along a little bit so that'd be quite nice and the low of the week as you might be able to tell my little baby 6410s died so i've got the 66 on the straw shredder which is awful on there absolutely terrible um for some reason it just doesn't like it's just not the same i don't know what it, i can't even explain it's not the same do not like it on there. It's not built to be in a yard tractor, that tractor. Um, my 6410s actually sheared the spline that comes off the drive shaft that goes into the gearbox. And there's a, it's like a thousand PTO spline, for those of you who know what that looks like. Um, and it bolts on the end of the drive shaft and it's sheared it off inside the gearbox. Not too major of a job, but they've got to uh, take the like tip the cab and whatever else to get at it to be able to get it out. So yeah, a bit of a nightmare because the bit that's sheared off is actually still inside and they can't get it out it's obviously a burr or something so that's what the cat is and he's going to sort that out for us but uh, hopefully it'll get it done pretty quickly because i hate that 6.6 six on there i have to keep taking it on and off every day as well which is really annoying because we're muck cutting so yeah that's my low of the week oh and with tb testing but hopefully that'll end up being a high if we pass but with tb testing this week and next week um so yeah you know it is what it is Oh, another thing that is going on this morning is we've actually got some judges coming around from the local farms competition because we've entered a few things in there this year. We don't normally enter, but they said that we were struggling for some livestock category entries and um, we had some nice looking wheat and spring beans as well. So we've chucked them in. Um, so we've actually entered in for, like I say, wheat, which is a milling wheat, which because we grow KWS X days. Um, we've got the spring beans, which we're growing vertigo. They look really well. We've entered the beef cattle, so we'll have all of these guys and the ones in the other shed, the steers, um, they'll be entered, which is what they're judging today. And we've also entered into the sucker cows, which is the one that I'm really wanting to win. I really want to win that. Not been to judge it yet, but that is the one that I'm like holding out all hopes for. So yeah, that'll be exciting. Um, bit different, bit different. So quite looking forward to that as well. And onto the main part of this week's video. Now, last week I said that Robert Higgins had been asking me how we were getting on with our understone herbal lays and red clovers in our arable silage and whatever else. And you know what I thought? That'd be a good video. Let's go and recap. So we're gonna have a bit of a good, the bad and the ugly of this year's arable silage. So to kick us off, let's have a look at a bit of the good, shall we? Because all this behind me, it's some of the arable forage, arable silage that we have actually drilled. And this is just straight arable silage. There's no under sowing going on in here. Um, but for this field, I'm actually chuffed a bit because this field is a bit like establishing crops on concrete. It's got very little organic matter. And to be quite honest, going through a bit of a regime at the minute of um, spring cropping, cover cropping. It's had this arable silage in it, which is almost like a polycrop because there's three different things in here. There's spring barley, spring oats and spring peas. And then I'm going to take this out. And my plan was originally to put it down to a red clover lay. And I'm thinking uh, about actually taking it and putting it into a sort of white clover grass lay. Um, because that way round, I'd have more chance of getting cows on here. So I was thinking if we could put something like white clover and grass in, get a couple of heavy cuts of silage off it at the beginning of every year, and then bring it into the grazing rotation, we get cattle across here as well. I think it could really do some good on this ground. So. I'm pretty chuffed with this. Um, it's just in flower, as you can see down here. We've got the oats and we've got peas and we've got the barley just coming into head. So I think give this another three or four weeks and we'll be looking at doing something with it. So yeah, pretty happy. Something else I probably should point out is as we get further across here, we get a bit less peas and the soil on this top part up to that electric post there is actually quite good. But as you drop off the bank, it gets a bit worse. And we've got sort of a good, one third of each over here. So a third peas, third barley, and a third uh, oats. But as we get further across, it goes a bit more sort of 
more predominantly oats and a bit of a little bit less peas and as we get across there there's a little bit less barley still and more um more oats again so yeah that's one thing i have noted as the soil gets worse the oats do better than everything else but still pretty good so here we are in the field of undersown herbal lay and it looks a bit green and i would say this combination of the good but also the ugly because it is all here it's done really well actually I'm, I'm really happy with the establishment of the herbal lay in this field but there is quite a lot of weeds as you can see there's patches of fat hen around and there's a few bits of chickweed and whatever else that's in here but that is something we have to deal with we can't actually spray it out because we'll end up spraying out half of the stuff that's in the actual herbal lay that we want to keep and last year when we established the herbal lay that you've seen in other videos that's really good at the back of the yard that um, was established in a very similar way. It was direct drilled um, with a demo claydon that we had at the time. And that also came with quite a lot of weeds. And what we did is when we mowed that later on in the year, it kind of took all of those weeds out and the herbal lay took over and those weeds never reappeared. So I'm not overly concerned by the level of weeds that are in here. Um, I'm sure they'll be fine when, they, uh, when we get to the other end and we actually sarge it and we see what's underneath. But I'll show you now what the actual herbal lay is like because this field is really varied. You can see there's a patch down that bottom there and there's a little bit right in that far corner that aren't quite as good as the rest of the field, but the rest of this field is absolutely amazing. So really chuffed with it. So if we take a look here, obviously you've got your fat hen in, like ignore all of that. But in the bottom here, we have the herbal lay. So we've got all of our clovers, as you can see, our grasses. We've got vetches in here. Um, we've got a chicories as well. There's plantain in places. It's actually really well established and it looks so good all the way across. Actually, if I come closer to the hedge, you can see it a little bit better. There's not quite so much weed here. So you can see, this is the herbal lay. This is pretty much solid herbal lay. There's a bit of the barley there that's not quite so good. This headland is actually, um, it's not very good at all. There's a water main that runs from about there, right down this headland and it goes to that big concrete water main just there. And they dig this up all the time to feed Hinkley, uh, which is a local town. They put more pipes in. So this, to actually get a plant like this, I'm really, really chuffed with. So you can see like all the plantains there, again, chicory, different types of grasses and, and herbs. So once we actually ha take the silage cut off of this and get rid of some of these weeds, there will be a really good blanket of herbal lay across this whole field. So I'm really pleased with this one. It looks a bit in row. Um, it is in between the rows and I think that's, partly down to how the claydon is drilled and whatever else but it will soon cover the whole field once we've uh, once we've silaged it so yeah happy with this one i'm actually just walking across because i'm going to show you the red clover which is through that gate there but this is that patch i was just pointing out that's not quite as green as the rest of the field but if you look down here closely it is all coming because there is some red clover there there is some grasses there's some vetch some more clovers some more grass here you can see it's all there or thereabouts. And I think what's happened here is there is actually a water main that runs from that pylon in the distance there. And it comes straight across all the fields and again goes to that big concrete block behind me. But there's also a gas main that runs from a red marker in the hedge just there, straight across here and runs across that next field. So this field has been dug up so many times and this is probably one of the pieces that has had a hell of a lot of traffic and most of what's on the top here is probably subsoil. Um, it's not really been dug up in my lifetime, but my dad can remember it being dug up. So yeah, I think that's probably what's going on here. It does tend to get really good crops when the weather conditions are perfect and get poorer crops when they're not. But this grass I'm sure will take over and I have got a bit of spare seed. So I can always just put a bit more on here when I need to. So now we're in the backfield here. And as you can see, there's a quite an even covering of barley across this field. What thing you might say to me is, I thought you were putting peas in. And yeah, we did. We put barley and peas in as our whole crop. And to be quite honest, the peas didn't do anything. They didn't come. Um, I'm not sure whether they were eaten by pigeons or whether they just didn't germinate. I'm not sure, but you can tell there's just barley now across this whole field. Um, and underneath here is some red clover, which I'm really pleased with because you can see we've got, yeah, a few thistles and a few weeds dotted around. But we have lots and lots of clover in the bottom, lots of grass. 
and actually this one is probably the biggest success of the lot so i'm super happy with this one um tiny bit ugly but definitely very good not sure whether you can tell but some of this barley is just about coming into head now um and what we'll do is we'll wait for it to get properly in head before we come in here and mow it and we'll take it out and hopefully underneath we'll have a really good crop of, of well in this one red clover in that one herbal lay and we'll be able to then sort of bring it either into the grazing rotation which is probably what we'll do with the herbal lay or we'll be able to mow it which is what we'll do with this grass lay but it'll be nice um someone did actually say to me a good idea was just to give it a little bit of n a little bit of nitrogen once we uh, get it harvested once we get the whole crop off just to give it a kick start and i think we might just do that a really low dose just to give it a boost but i'm really pleased with this i don't know if you can see it but it's just all over now to the untrained eye this field probably looks pretty good but it's not this is the bad and it is bad it's an absolute disaster look at that nothing this was the field that you probably remember a few videos back we drilled it with the whole crop and it was a permanent pasture field that we wanted to reseed and we we're going to put the whole crop in as a bit of a break crop and uh, we went in drilled it it drilled really nicely it went in quite well and this patch here that you can see that has come well was actually really wet and it was when i drilled it that we were sinking a little bit it was very very wet um and the rest of it went in perfectly but what happened was is it was so dry after drilling that all this didn't germinate at all and just got devoured by pigeons and crows and these bits did germinate way a bit a bit wetter and it went in a bit deeper and just hit that moisture but funnily enough all that is oats there is no barley and there is no peas whatsoever so having spoken to dad about it i think what we'll probably do in the future if we ever do this again is probably disc the top or something like that just to break up the soil a bit more maybe just allow us to get it in a little bit deeper because with it being permanent pasture it was so hard and so dry because we would had a dry spring that if we have just disc the top go a bit of till fair try to put the drill in as deep as possible and get just a straight oats in there and we'll try and just look after it as best we can if it does really well we'll maybe even combine it and if it doesn't we can just mow it um but i don't think we'll put the barley in i don't think we'll put the peas in because it's just not worked at all um it has been a bit of a disaster but no weeds have grown back so that just probably goes to show how dry it is yeah this one is a bad one this one's a really bad one probably is worth mentioning that we will still mow all of that and that bit on the top headland um because might as well make the most of what we've got but it is a bit disappointing nonetheless um but that's what we're doing this for it's a bit of an experiment i knew it was going to be an experiment when we tried it and you live and learn don't you so next time we'll make some changes and see whether we can do a bit better and with all of that said and done thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed it please give me a like and subscribe i really appreciate it now We've just finished TB testing uh, the first week because we've got a TB test again next week and we've had one inconclusive already. I don't really know what that means though um, because normally an inconclusive is just taken that you test that one animal again but it seems when we're talking to the vet that sometimes they'll just take it because we've already gone down with TB. I don't really know what's going on. My mind is blown with TB at the moment. I just don't get it. I'm just, I'm lost with it all. So uh, I suppose we'll just wait for the letter from the APHA and see what they tell us. Um, but yeah, TB testing again next week um away from home at thornton that are going to be a bit of a challenge but we'll we'll get through it i'm sure i've got to take the seat out of this fork truck right now because the aircon knob isn't working and apparently the thing for it is underneath that seat somewhere so i've got to go and see if i can uh, work it out and adjust it whatever you're doing this weekend have a great one because the weather looks absolutely amazing it's boiling right now it's going to get even better i'm going to get out on the bike early doors um before work i think and enjoy that i'm gonna have a barbecue as well because i had a barbecue this year and i love a barbecue so whatever you're doing have a great one enjoy the tennis final because hopefully cameron norrie will get through by the time this video goes out we'll know whether he's in the final or not but hopefully he is um whatever you're doing have a great one see you all soon bye